Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, a collection of interesting and useful information when building model steam engines and boilers. This is part 5. Completing the special water tank which provides an overflow for a live steam injector into a lower tank. In this compilation video the extracts are taken from part 6 of my series Making a Stuart 504 Boiler Plant and I recommend watching the entire series, it's full of useful information. In the outer part of my workshop it is currently about 2 degrees below zero and I know that's nothing if you live in Siberia or maybe Alaska but it's cold enough for me and I'm keeping my tin of etch primer in the warmer part of the workshop. I've shaken it up and now it's time to spray the part with it and I'm spraying this on a piece of wood on top of my belt sander in the outer part of the workshop where it's quite cold. This stuff really does spray horribly, it splats all over the work. I don't quite get it but somehow it goes smooth before it dries and it does the trick, it sticks very well to the metal and I don't think that it's anything to do with temperature it's just the way this paint is, maybe the nozzle is a bit suspect but having said that I've sprayed quite a lot of this stuff onto pieces of metal in recent months and the spraying process was very similar from each can and now that the part is painted I'm taking it back into the warmer part of the workshop but now already it's the next day, I don't remember going to bed and as it says on the tin, to wait 24 hours before re-coating, I've waited 24 hours. I'm spraying the tank base now using some satin black. And this stuff sprays really well. I find this to be very good quality paint. And I've got this down to a fine art. I can put just enough paint on to do it in one go, without the paint running, and without it being too thick and going orange peely. But I think that's sometimes down to the quality of the paint. And as I said earlier, this is really good stuff. I don't want to give this another coat, so very carefully, after I've painted the outside, I'm painting the inside. And that's it, there's sufficient paint on the thing now. I don't need to go mad, because it would be really tragic if I put too much paint on and it ran down the side, but it's not going to do that. A few minutes ago you saw me painting the lower part of the tank. And thanks to the magic of video, 24 hours has now elapsed, and I can now assemble the entire thing. I've made a couple of gaskets, this is one of them for the bottom part of the tank and to fix the support column in place I'm using an M6 countersunk bolt and here's the column firmly fixed in place. As this is a water tank and even though I fitted it with a gasket I still needed to use a stainless steel bolt to prevent it going rusty and the easiest way to find a stainless steel bolt is to use one of these. This is a telescopic magnet, it doesn't need to be telescopic, any magnet will do. I just have one of these in the workshop in case I drop some pieces of metal in inaccessible places. And as you can see the magnet has no difficulty in attracting the bolt and the allen key. But what's going on here? This bolt is not magnetic, yet it's steel. Is this witchcraft I ask myself? It's a kind of metallurgical witchcraft that I know nothing about. Not all stainless steel is non-magnetic, some stainless steel is magnetic. But this M6 allen cap head bolt and this washer and the nut that I'm not going to be using is non-magnetic and therefore it's stainless steel and perfect for holding the water tank components together. And here's another top tip, that's two tips in one episode, I'm using a pair of surgical forceps to initially hold the allen key. I'm holding the tank upside down and I'm drawing round it on a piece of brass because this piece of brass is going to be machined to make the top cap. The purpose of this top cap, apart from it's going to look good, is to keep the inside of the water tank clean when the boiler plant's not in use because when the boiler plant's in use generally speaking the top cap will not be in position because I'll need to top up the tank very frequently. I roughly cut out the shape on the bandsaw and now I'm finding the centre of this piece because I need to drill a hole in the middle which I'm going to thread 2BA I'm going to fit a 2BA bolt and this will be clamped in the chuck so then I'll be able to turn this very rough brass blank into a very nice top cap for the water tank. Then I took it over to the drilling machine and drilled the hole in the center, which is 5 seconds of an inch in diameter. And in this clip, I'm threading the hole using a 2BA tap. After which I screw in a 2BA bolt, followed by a 2BA nut. And as you can see, the whole thing's quite off center because it was only a rough cut to start with. But I did allow for this by cutting on the outside of the felt tip pen line. So by the time I've got it to the right size, it will be a perfect fit on the top of the water tank. 
You may notice that I've changed the tool to a parting tool because this cuts a much squarer edge. But if you're doing a job like this, bear in mind this is only held by the nut of a 2BA bolt, so you can put a lot of pressure on it and be more gentle than it looks with this. Once I cleaned up the outer edges, I removed the nut and used some fine sandpaper followed by some scotch Brite to get a finish like this. Once I parted off the component, I refitted it to a 2BA bolt held in the chuck and by applications of different grades of sandpaper followed by polishing it on the polishing spindle, the finished part looks exactly like this. And now to complete the job, I just need to verify that this is a stainless steel bolt. Well, it's not magnetic, so I guess it is. All that's left to do now is to fit the 2BA bolt to the threaded top cap from underneath and then fit the small knob to the top of the 2BA bolt. And that's it. When I first started this very simple ornamental turning, I didn't really know what the knob was going to look like. If I was going to make more than one, I would use a form tool. But this is an absolute one-off, and there's only one like it in the world, and here it is. I'm quite pleased with the way this water tank's turned out. It looks exactly like I thought it would look when I started making it. Stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.